Machine repeat here, folks. Thanks for stopping by. Boy, what a fun day I had today. Saturday, February 27th, 2010. I made my way to Grand Rapids, Michigan for the 18th Annual National Winter Convention of the International Harvesters Collectors Club. The good folks in red were nice enough to invite me to come and speak at their Saturday night banquet. Saturday afternoon, I had the opportunity to walk the show floor and visit with tons of great folks, all with a passion for IHC equipment. Here are a couple of video interviews I shot. Uh, Machinery Pete here, and I'm here with Fremont Hoover from Winnemac, Indiana. Now, Fremont, I understand you had um, kind of a unique role with starting this International Harvesters uh, Collectors Club. Why don't you tell me the story? Well, when, when was it? When was it? That you, that you got started with the idea. Well, we started the club in 90, and a couple years before that, we began to kind of ask people what okay. they thought about the possibility. and. Okay, uh, we have everybody thought it was going to be a lot of work, and it certainly was. Store store so you, you were in Winnemac, and there was a it local show? Lorna Wilson. Yeah, I had become a, a director. Come on down, Lorna, to the Tupperware <laughs> booth. That local show. Uh, are, all, we all, the, all, are we on the prices right? Yes. This and is our the winner of the Elia Sophia Door. Oh, so how many people are at the convention here now, would you guess? Karen Thomas. This weekend, how many is people are at the convention? Yeah, Karen. All right. 500 And where are folks coming from? Are they from all over the country? And uh, Well, they really are. Also, yeah. just a reminder, I don't know how many chapters are, social are represented here, but there's, party hats. there's nearly and we 30, got the banquet chapters. At 60. 40 chapters. 30. Thank you. You've been a lovely what audience. 30 okay. some odd. But back in 1990, there was no national, international no, harvester. No, no. In fact, when we one of the we put a let's organize letter in red power and gas engine magazine and then we started corresponding with the people who answered okay. and that was one of the first questions <clears throat> what do we, what kind of a club do we think we'll have okay. will we will we have something where we have a, a show every summer and throw some money in a hat right or will we have an organization we wound up with an incorporated organization that was we didn't even know if it would just be Regional or national. Okay. Uh, and now you guys have this winter convention and then Red Power and the is that every Red summer? Red Power in the summer. Okay. And I guess it was. I think we've had a dozen chapters before we got one in overseas. Okay. We have a Sweden chapter. Uh, you have a Swedish chapter of. Okay, yeah. awesome. They can just go to Minnesota. It wouldn't matter, you know. But, or is that, yeah, we, we got some Swedes here in Minnesota where I'm from. <laughs> Uh, Fremont. Actually, I went to a Swedish Swedish, Swedish college in uh, St. Peter, Minnesota. So you know, it's us a, a, a funny little aside. John Arbison, who is the president of the Swedish chapter, came okay. to several of our things. Okay. <coughs> Swedes must have a lot of money because a whole <laughs> bunch of them would come across okay. here for these events. But he came to the winter convention in Moline, Illinois. Okay. And we went to the restaurant and had supper together, and he said, Americans have many wonderful things, but your beer is just dishwater. <laughs> <laughs> now, he didn't make you have any Norwegian uh, lutefisk there, did he? No, I, I, oh, okay. no, no, I, uh, I advise, well, that's a big back home where I grew up. Uh, I'm, I never caught the flavor for it, but... Uh, but again, what a, what a cool thing to be involved with the growth of this organization, Fremont. Uh, it must it must feel pretty cool after 20 years to see all the people and all the fun they have. And uh, so you it's, must have must make a lot of friends through the organization over the years. Yes, we've made some real good friends. We have we have made a lot of acquaintances, so many acquaintances that many times I can't remember them. Right. But uh, we have we have made some real close friends. And now tell me about uh, your red tractors back home in Winnemac, Fremont. What do you what's your pride and joy? I've got a couple of forty horse diesels. I got a WD forty and a W uh, a TD forty. Okay. That are those are both diesels of okay. the nineteen thirties wow. vintage. And how long have you owned them? Uh, uh, since the mid '80s, and I actually got one of them restored already. You do? <laughs> do you take two parades then? And uh, uh, not often. Are you going to have it to the uh, Red Power this summer? Yeah, we'll have some. Okay. Maybe both of those. All right. You need to send me some Lorna pictures Wilson. of that. I think there, Fremont. We've got Lorna, some, Lorna, a few other items, senior. but okay. those are kind of the you unique ones. Tell the police pick her up. Well, I really appreciate you uh, visiting with us here, Fremont, and thanks for all your hard work with the convention here. And uh, good stuff. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Also, just a reminder, you've done already. Now, Machine Repeat here at the 2010 Winter International Harvester Convention. And I've made a couple new friends here with a cool story I thought I might share with you. We've got uh, 
Tom Gorley and Tom, you're from uh, Rolling Prairie, Indiana. Rolling Prairie, Indiana, and we've got Jerry Smoker from Wanata, Indiana. Okay, and Jerry, you are the president of the. I'm president of International Harvester Collectors Club, Chapter 33. Okay. And, and we will be hosting Red Power Roundup 2010 in Laporte, Indiana, okay. June 24th, 25th, and 26th. Okay. And now you were telling me, Jerry, there's an, an annual auction as part of the uh, Red Power. Uh, not, not always, but this year we decided to have a consignment auction okay. in our show okay. to sell IH only equipment. Right. Now I, I understand we have an unusual tractor that's, that's came through the club that's going to be up for sale this year. Um, we and we have a picture of it right here. Tom, why don't you grab that picture? Now what do we got here? That's a W400 diesel tractor. Uh, there weren't very many of them made. And the majority of them that are made were retailed in Canada. Okay. And, were, and there were none retailed east of the Mississippi River. Okay. Um, we were and featuring wheat we're featuring Wheatland tractors. Okay. And our club come across this tractor very close to home. The club the tractor came locally. Uh, half a dozen club members got together and restored it. Okay. Over in, in over the winter, our our final. And what year do you figure that is? That's a 1957. 57. Okay. And it's going up for and it will be Friday, June. This will be sold Friday, June 24th okay. at noon. At noon. Okay. And how many tractors would you guess you might have on the auction? Uh, that's hard to hard say. Hard to say at this Right point. now, uh, we have about with the auction being four months away, we have about. 15 or 16 tractors consigned on okay. that. And a little bit now, Jerry, you were telling me about some unusual internet, well, some fun internationals that you own. Uh, the demonstrators, tell me about uh, what you got there. Uh, I've got an 826 gold demonstrator and a 1026 gold demonstrator. And you've owned them for how long? Uh, the 826 I've had for about five years, yeah. and the 1026 going on three years. And we're just recently featured in a, what was the magazine again? Heritage Iron Magazine. Heritage Iron, okay. Awesome. Good stuff. How long and how many uh, red tractors you got at home, you were telling me? I've got 16 totally restored tractors. Okay. Well, this is fun. It's fun to get down here and meet you guys. And Tom, you were telling me that you have a, you rescued a Super MTA from the... 1954 Super from the MTA folks farm from my, back. Uh, wife's grandparents' farm in northwestern Iowa. And at what condition was it when you uh, took possession? It was well, needed a little work? metal was good, in really good condition. Okay. It was in good running condition, but it had been uh, sitting outside for a lot of years and, and uh, definitely need a little... little uh, TLC, huh? TLC uh, <laughs> terminology. <laughs> cool. Uh, that's awesome. Now, you actually, you were telling me you actually got involved with some tractor pulls with this tractor? Yeah, I play around pulling with it. You know, go out and... Spend ten dollars a pole, and if I'm really lucky, I might win two or three if awesome. I if I get placed real well. Just awesome. having fun. Well, I told you now. When you get back, you got to email email me a picture of that Super MTA, right? I will do that. All right. Well, thanks, guys. It was good to visit with you, and uh, yeah, making new friends here at the convention. You know what my what's, what's is? Grandpa's tractor? Farm all. What's that? Farm all. Farm all. Ah, do you, do you like to ride with Grandpa? Does Grandpa let you steer once in a while? How about, awesome. how about the backhoe down there? Remember riding in that? You get to ride in a backhoe, Isaac? Oh, that one that's is, cool. It's a yellow one, but it's a John Deere. It's and, then, and then what about the great big tractor that, that John took you when you fed the cattle with? Yep. Yep, that's a, <laughs> good stuff. That's a, that's a case I ate. Ah, well, that's good stuff, Isaac. Keep, keep, keep riding with Grandpa. That's good stuff. I think we may have a future international harvester collector there in young Isaac. Thanks again to everyone I met and visited with at the convention today. You made a Minnesota boy like me feel right at home. Until next time, I'm Machine Repeat. See you at the sales.